Uh, hello, hello everyone. Uh, thanks uh, to the organization. Thanks to the big things for giving me the, the opportunity to explain my experience in, in the use of graphs and in this, uh, in this industry of analytics. So I hope uh, you you will be interested. It will be interesting for for everyone, and uh, that's the objective to learn a little bit more and to see how uh, graphs fit in the in the analytics uh, industry. Let's see what we are going to to review during this a uh, little bit more than half an hour. We will have a brief uh, talk and a brief uh, journey uh, on the history of data analytics. And how we represent at, at the moment, how we rep represent the world, how we represent the reality, and how and why we have to use graphs for analytics. Okay, and then let's talk also a little bit about the, te the technology that's behind this uh, this uh, graph data science uh, needs. Then a, a, a small conclusion to wrap up. So let's move ahead. Uh, well, you have seen this this schema a thousand times. Okay, I'm not going to 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 talk about history of of data science. No, don't worry. I'm not going to even talk about a couple of of algorithms. This is not the the objective of this presentation. But I want, at least at the speed of light, right, to review the evolution that brings us to the to the place we are at the moment. Hmm? Uh, and what happened since the beginning of the first artificial intelligence needs uh, to the the the, the last uh, deep learning techniques that as I like this this uh, schema in in a kind of of earth because we are digging every every day more deep and deep into into way, different ways of extracting value of data and it really uh, shows how how it is in reality so let's move what what brings us to here? Uh, the explosion, in fact, of data science has been possible thanks to two main factors: okay, algorithms and the evolution of the technology. Since uh, Alan Turing in the fifties and of the pre of the last century uh, began to talk about uh, how machines can can uh, can talk with with people or can think like people uh, like us. Uh, to the last few years where we have been uh, digging into into data through machine learning and deep learning techniques mathematics has been helping on this on this trip they have been helping to to find the right way to answer questions not just to answer questions you know to, but also to find the right way to to answer because for every single kind of, of, of question, we have a way of finding the answer, okay? This is uh, where a supervised or to unsupervised systems, to classification, to uh, prediction systems, models, okay, of course. At the end, from the darkness, we had a, a long time ago to the, to the light that we have at the moment when we look at the data. And of course, all of this has been possible thanks that the technology has uh, has grow uh, in in terms of capacity and enablement to work with huge data sets and to apply algorithms that perform really uh, really well with with amounts of data that uh, never before was possible to 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 work with uh, we start working with single threaded uh, for for a couple of thousands of data of rows to now to distributed systems that can afford can can load and can uh, manage billions of of rows from batch to real time from coding to to the last auto machine learning platforms so this is it's been a, a long trip but why are we, i i am talking about this because this trip these algorithms, this uh, technology that it's wonderful and has enabled us to do a lot of things, uh, works properly, but we need to fit with data. We need to fit with data. And not any data. We need to fit with the right data. 
and data is uh, is subject to old problems such as the quality of it. Uh, I'm not going to dip into the quality of data here, but it's important this this uh, this formula that uh, two factors. Uh, if you increase each of these two factors, it increases the accuracy of the models. And um, it's true. If we have better data, we have better accuracy. And if we have better reality representation, we also have better accuracy. What I say about data, I'm just saying that it's an old problem uh, with new techniques, but at the end, the problem of garbage in, garbage out, it remains the same as a couple of years ago. Let's focus on the reliability of the of the representation of 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 the of the of the truth of the uh, of the world at the end. Hmm? It, what is important here is that even we have lots of data, maybe that data is not representative of the entities we are trying to to analyze. Hmm? For instance, if we are calculating a risk scoring. Uh, for a for a credit request, for example, uh, and we have lots of data of the customer, but we lack on economic data. I'm sure that the that the accuracy of that model will be well not very good. So it's a question of right data. This is very simple what I say, but we will go more in depth in this in this uh, specific mm -hmm. point. Okay, so let's focus on improving the representation of reality. <clears throat> so let's move to representing the world. And the world, apparently, is very well represented with relations. Uh, it's not me who says this. There is a lot of literature out there, uh, papers, uh, scientific papers, books, so on. Uh, uh, this is just an example. Right? Let's focus on a, on a couple of them. Uh, maybe you know this this uh, book of James H. Folder and Nicholas uh, Christakis that a couple of years ago uh, released this this study of how social networks influence in the individual. So we cannot explain individuals without understanding the the environment their context, their connections, okay? So the last, the last sentence, this is in the preface of the, of the book. So to know who we are, we must understand how we are connected. And this is the point. This is the point. Understanding the connections, it means understanding and shaping and representing better the world. It's not just uh, James Folder. It's, there is a lot of, of, of uh, literature out there, as I said, and, it began everything of all all these all these studies began with the social networks because it's what is more uh, mature now, right? But uh, social networks were just the starting gun of this race. Now uh, you can think on on this same approach and this same uh, needs to cover every single data analytics use case in your organization. Because graphs are uh, graphs, uh, networks are are, uh, are everywhere. We will see that. So relations are a good way of understanding the world. It's relations are a, a good way to to model the behavior, to, to predict the behavior. And we've been working a long time, years, without thinking in taking this into account. We've been working in the world of tables, in the world of data sets, where every row explains an entity or tries to explain an entity, but with discrete information. And this, uh, and this approach lacks of context, lacks of information on the relationships of this uh, entity we are analyzing. So connections between data it's like the dark matter in, in our systems. Eh? Uh, dark matter now at astrophysics, it's very famous. Eh? We, we have seen, we, we have had the dark matter in front of our eyes for forever, in fact, uh, but we haven't realized it was there. And it's really covering, it's really filling 
a, a lot of the universe. Th the same way, the same way, uh, we have our our, our relationships in in our data in our data uh, that we already have is this dark matter that we have to dig and and to and to find value from it. So we have barely begun to use these connections to find value, and uh, it's time to start. It's time to to start because the data we have already has the the relationships. We don't think we don't need to think on extra information or extra data. No, no, the data we already have it's enough to to find value. And why uh, we had this dark matter and we haven't had the possibility to 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 find value from it? Uh, if it's so good, no, we say uh, the relationships are so good and, and we haven't used them before. First, because we didn't know it, they were so good. And second, because they were like hidden. Hmm? But uh, they are hidden because we live, we have been living in, the, in this kind of dictatorship of the table, of the data set, the rows and the columns. And as I said, this kind of approach lacks uh, of context. Don't say nothing, don't say anything about the relationships of every single of these rows. And here is where graphs comes up. So we arrive to the point of the graphs. Hmm? What are graphs? Well, I'm sure you all know, but just in case one or two of you <laughs> don't know what's a graph, don't, don't mind, this is not necessary to know a lot of graphs to, to be here. This is not a graph. Eh? This, is, this is a chart. A graph is this. A graph is connected data. It's nodes and relationships. It's a way of represent the reality that represent the world. You see this, and if I give to any one of you this uh, schema, you will understand. I have a person that has a checking account in a bank. I, do, I, can, I can bring this to anyone in the world and, and they will understand. Believe me, this is not usual in, in, in systems. So uh, it's, it's a really natural way of, 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 of ordering, of, of shaping the information. Because this is a graph, but this is a graph too. This is a, 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 a water molecule. We have three nodes, there are three atoms, two hydrogen, one oxygen, and two relationships that, that bring them all together. So graphs are very inside of us. It's like a natural way of representing information. It's, I can show you this. This is a graph that's representing uh, cocktails. And you, we see that we have the amaretto sour that um, has some garnish like orange or cherry and contains lemon juice and and and, and other and like a simple syrup or amaretto we understand this we our our brain understands this very simply and why it understands is very simple simply because in fact even we have a huge graph in our in our head each of us we are a graph <laughs> we have a, a graph with 90 million nodes that are our 90 billion sorry nodes that are our neurons and uncountable synapses between them that are the relationships where, that is where the knowledge re, uh, remains right so it's a natural way of ordering information of representing the world so why then we should use uh, the graphs in analytics and how, of course. It's not just why, it's how. <laughs> First, this graph theory. Graph theory is not new. Graph theory came up in the 18th century, thanks to Leonard Euler that tried to, to model a problem. The, the problem was how to cross the seven bridges of, of Konigsberg without repeating uh, a bridge and, and the piece of land. 
that was uh, from from the from the image from the left to the image to the uh, to the graph from the right. That is the modelization of the problem. Here is uh, the beginning of the graph theory mathematics. Okay, so why we use this uh, for analytics? Because basically they improve the accuracy of the models. It doesn't matter on which kind of models we're talking about. Prediction, classification, clustering, whatever. Uh, and without needing extra data. Data is there. Relationships haven't been uncovered. With graphs, we uncover relationships and we, and we find value from them. Mm. So the why is clear improve the accuracy of our models. And how are we going to, to use them? Uh, we are going, we can, we, we are going to do that using um, quest, uh, asking questions and, and finding answers and using algorithms, using graph native algorithms. There are many algorithms that we are already using in, in, the, in the, our machine learning pipelines at the moment. But there is a family of this, of them, that are the graph ones. Okay, um, so using them that shape and, and explain reality better than than anything else, uh, we can um, manage to find this value. We can we can uh, we can classify algorithms in many ways. Uh, we can, for example, we have a. Uh, decide this you know, community detection algorithms that classifies that clusters detects creates clusters in the in the entities we are analyzing our customers our users our visitors in our web page or our e-commerce mm -hmm. um, so partitions the data between groups in groups uh, centrality centrality brings us importance of, of of the elements importance of the entities we have in the in the in the graph influencers, um, many, many, all, in fact, all, all, all these families has inside different kind of algorithms that has a direct translation to application in the real world. I mean, it's not just mathematics, of course. It's because uh, the importance the, of, 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 uh, of a customer that comes up from, a, for example, page rank, uh, it's, it's saying something. It, it means uh, we have a more important customer than others, for example. There are lean prediction, uh, a lean prediction family that estimates, for example, the likelihood uh, to, to have a new relationship between two, uh, two users, two customers, two visitors, two uh, whatever. Similarity is more standard one, but pathfinding and search, it's also something very uh, natural in a graph find the shortest path, find or the longest path, uh, or find if these two elements are connected in some way and how how many hops they have between them. So the 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 the, uh, the, the connection is more strong if it's closer than it's less strong if it's uh, if it's longer, no the more hops we have in between. And embeddings. The graph embeddings are powerful. They, they bring topology of the graph, topology of the reality, to a machine understandable, uh, less uh, with, with less dimensions uh, way of, of analyzing, right? So we are converting topology of a, of a, of a graph. You have seen the topology of, of this, for example, graph that I show you about cocktails. Converting that topology of every single cocktail to an array to a, a, an array of numbers that are understandable by a machine learning um, algorithm pipeline, etc. So, okay, you say how? But, well, you can say, Joseph, you told us how, but not many how. So you could say yes, but but how I apply that algorithms. Okay, it's a it's a it's a journey. It's not we just execute and that's all. Uh, this is a journey. This is a journey that starts with more simple questions, to more sophisticated, 
to these embeddings, to graph, ne uh, graph networks. So it's a journey that from answering questions, more simple questions, but graph questions, to even the, the graph uh, native learning. So something that learns for th from the structure, the proper structure of the graph. Mm -hmm. And why, why, what happens? What uh, the question is, what happens on what I have at, at, up until the moment? Okay. Uh, I have a, a, at the moment a ecosystem of tools, methodologies, etc., of my machine learning at the moment. So, how I, uh, what I do with that? I, I throw away everything and use graphs? No. No. Graphs comes to complement data, to complete the data, but you don't need to throw away anything. Everything you did, it's perfect, it's good, it's cool. What I mean is, uh, what I say is that with graphs, your results, your accuracy will be much better. Mm. So why? Because remember, this, this current data science uh, models ignore ne network structure. They don't know the topology about the topology, they know about discrete data. So graphs adds these highly predictable features to our actual machine learning models. So we work like this with this information that comes from the tables, eh? we say tables data sets, and this information that comes from the graph. And now we say, well, Josep, uh, please give me something that we can <laughs> understand better. Let's see an example. Let's imagine the, the same graph, uh, the same table I showed you a couple of slides before, uh, that has, let's imagine that has uh, this, this data. This is the discrete data of our customer. We have the customer ID, the address, the phone number, the gender, the age, the income, if it's married or not, the level of studies, whatever. We can have 50 more features here, okay? It's a table of a lot of features. But look that no one of these features talks about the context of this of this person, of this, uh, of this uh, customer, let's say. Let's imagine that we are talking about uh, uh, this, this uh, data set to be uh, for, for calculating uh, a risk of, of credit in a, in, a, in, a, in a bank, okay? So all this from the left, comes from the table. And all this from the right comes from the graph. Discrete data versus related data. Related data is things like the page rank. We see that the, page, the highest page rank is the, is the customer two. The community, we have customer one and two in the same community. So we could imagine that one influencer in the community number two is the customer number two, because it has a higher page rank. And it can be used for many different things. It could be used to, for example, a churn a calculations. If customer two is, is, uh, is on at risk of, of, of abandon us, uh, we have to take care of it because maybe influences a lot in their community. Hmm? Or maybe for I don't know for even uh, ordering the the queue in the in the call center depending on the on this patron because it's more important than the other between a centrality degree total neighbors all this information is pure algorithms is pure technical data of the graph explains the structure of the graph but I have added another one this risk connect. This is another, another feature that we can find from the graph, but that is more related uh, from the, uh, in, on, the, on, the, on the business, not that much on the technical structure, but also the business. So we can answer a lot of business uh, questions that were very difficult to answer in a very simple way. This, for example, if we are analyzing this, this credit risk, let's this uh, this risk connect um, um, feature. What is ask? What is answering is if this person is connected to less than four hops to someone tagged as a fraudster. 
I'm sure this is relevant for a for a for a model. So, uh, but calculating this out of a graph, it is really really uh, difficult. It's very time consuming. So this is how we coexist both discrete data that we have already and the related data that we take out from the graph or calculate inside the graph, of course. Eh? So it's time to learn. It's time to, to learn algorithms, to understand algorithms, and to be where are they applicable in the, in the real life, because this is not mathematics again, it's business. We have a uh, talk about these uh, these uh, different families or classifications of algorithms, pathfinding connections, no right, centralities, uh, to 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 rank the importance of a of of of, a, of of an entity, of a customer, of a product, of a whatever it is, and we have here like degree centrality, closeness centrality, page rank, all this. Uh, ranks us, uh, gives us scorings of, of importance of, a, of an element. The community detection, like Lubain, like uh, label propagation, link prediction, well, we, 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 we talked a little bit uh, earlier. The point here is that it's not uh, something that we have to, to develop. Algorithms are already there, you just need to use it. But you know you need to to know when to use one and when to use another one. That is something that in the, in the more uh, mature machine learning uh, techniques is already uh, clear. You you don't need to calculate a k means. It's there. You just use it, and everyone has a a, a, a function to that calculates. But but you need to know when to use a k-means instead of another one. Okay, so it's the same. Know the know the algorithms and use it. So now that we have the algorithms and the and we know the importance of them to to shape reality, to explain reality, and to to increase the accuracy of our models, we say okay, but we need something. Uh, the support, the technical support, will will uh, will execute them. Yes, uh, in fact, if you remember at the beginning, I said if, uh, the, when I talk about the algorithms and technology, now we are reviewing this. Graphs are uh, gives the, the the algorithms, the graph graph uh, mathematics, graph theory, and technology brings the possibility to execute that at scale, okay? That's the point. So the graph technology that's behind the graph data science, what is at the end, it's a system for, for handling very, 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 very efficiently relationships between data. And this, uh, this, is, this is the sum up, it's a way of, uh, of of managing efficiently the relationships. We have had many systems, technical systems, to, 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 thread, to, to manage very efficiently data sets, but not relationships. So now it's time for graph technology. And we have different graph technologies. We, we, we have from the uh, memory, in memory uh, distributed graph systems, like GraphX, GraphFrames, et cetera. But the last time it became the, the, the need of having something else. It's not just I bring something in memory and I calculate and I take that down because data must to be connected always. And I need to reshape data in, 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 the, in, the, in the graph to change the data, to, to find new uh, connections. So then it's when the, the, the graph databases as uh, like, like Neo4j came up to, to answer this question, to have native graph storage and easily to work with the graph, refactor the graph, uh, traverse the graph, create inferred relationships, take a system up and down and, and magically and quickly have the, the database already up and running. 
something that with uh, the libraries you cannot achieve okay and and so graph databases are cool it's I, i'm sure you know this um, uh, this ranking that db engines uh, has in, in in internet this has a, a trend a score you see that graph databases have really bumped absolutely the market on this since five six years ago they are really cool they are really cool because there's something else uh, behind because there's value eh? and why are they cool it's not just because they are very nice <laughs> it's because they work and they bring value of course and let's see an example eh? um we can talking about social networks because it maybe was the first uh, way of, of using it. Uh, we can we can we can model a social network with a relational database. Let's imagine this: eh? uh, the friends and and relationships, uh, the friendship of people and friendships. We have two tables, persons and friends. So, to to ask uh, to this system, relational system. Give me the friends of my friends, or friends of Joseph. We have something like this, a, qu a query like this. It's not very nice, but well, apparently it should work. Okay, let's see how we should ask that to to, to a graph database. So with Cipher, that's uh, the, the the language that uh, Neo4j brought up, brought to the market, and now it's open Cipher as a standard, and and in way of being the graph query language. Mm -hmm. Um, you see that it's a it's a it's a uh, it's a language for for patterns. It's a language for patterns. You, we see a connected to b connected to c, and here we see with these brackets and these arrows that it's clear that a connected to b connected to c with a is Joseph. Give me c's. C's are the friends of the friends of Joseph. The friends of the friends of Joseph. A is Joseph, B is friends of Joseph, C is friends of the friends. So it's very nice. It's very nice, but it's not enough being very nice. It has to be very uh, fast and, and performant. So let's see a very quick example. But imagine a million uh, people network with 50 friends per person. So we have 1 million nodes and 50. A million uh, relationships, and how perform relational database versus graph databases, native databases. That's important. In the second level, friends of friends, more or less the same. But look at how relational databases uh, really the, the the time that uh, lasts to to answer the questions uh, increases. Uh, absolutely geometrically you know uh, it's it's exponentially in fact uh, so 30 30 seconds half an hour more than half an hour while here is almost flat the, the answer is almost flat why because uh, on and this is the this is the uh, another way of looking at this the more hops we have the more volume we have in a relational or other uh, NoSQL databases um, the more hops or the more volume, the, the most uh, exponential time uh, takes to answer the questions. While graph native databases are in the most uh, volume or most hops, uh, the, the answer is the same for contextual answers. Eh? And why it happens this? Because, oh my God, relational databases even are called relational. They do not have relations. <laughs> And no, the relations are something that appear in, in query time when here is a one and there is a, an ID one. So it's the same, it's related. But we have to ask every, every time the database for this relationship. While graph native databases are a democracy where data and relationships are both citizens alike. Both exist, both are persisted in the database. So while traversing the graph, we don't need to ask uh, the, 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 the engine again for the next hop. The data is already there connected. That's why it's so fast. That's why 
it has to be fast because calculating a, a, a page rank or a centrality or whatever requires a lot of a, a high speed. So and how and because they, this, this, uh, these uh, algorithms are there and we can use them, uh, finding communities like, uh, for example, with, with label propagation, it's, it's very simple. This is an example of how we, in a person's uh, graph, we would calculate the community using label, label propagation algorithm. We just call this, this library, boom, and after a couple of, of seconds or minutes or whatever, of course, it depends on the, on the, on the volume, uh, we have a 20,000 count, uh, uh, 20, count number of communities and end up with a with a with a uh, converge uh, converge so it's it's stable and it ran with nine nine iterations okay so we can see this for example the most uh, the, the biggest community that has uh, 24 elements and we and <laughs> you see that has really a lot of relationships between that elements in this case persons okay so to conclude to conclude i would say that um graphs and graph technology came here to stay so we encourage you to 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 use it eh? why are here to stay because they provide great value adding these features using graph uh, embeddings and Understanding the 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 shape of the of the of the data in terms of topology of 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 this uh, uh, of these relationships that are closer to each element brings value brings value brings value to the to the accuracy of the of the of the models. Eh? The technology is ready. The technology is capable to manage highly is, is highly scalable at the moment to to manage. Uh, huge volumes, so uh, we can we can handle things that a couple of years ago was impossible to think of. Another point is using a graph database. That's an important point. Using a graph database brings us the possibility to think more in the what and not in the how. To just ask things and the system do it for you. It's not just a question of algorithms. It's a question of asking every any any question as we ask to every single database um with with sql eh? uh, so it's a it's a, a a great step having native persistence having a native uh, um, in of course has the persistence in disk and in memory as as you have the libraries but we have both worlds here so it's important it's it's a it's a good and, and a big step forward and so graphs uh, are everywhere that's the point uh, we we see we, this is our name graph everywhere so we really feel that uh, you have just to start working with this and to dig into your dark matter that you have in your data, that these relationships that will bring you a lot of value. And uh, we encourage, as I said, to start tomorrow. Well, after the big things uh, event, okay? And that's all. Uh, thank you uh, for, for your time. Uh, if you have any any questions, I'll be delighted. Or if you want to contact me, I'll be delighted to to help you and anything you need. Thank you very much. <laughs>